Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're back out in our corn patch today. This is the peaches and cream corn we got from Hoss Tool Seed Company. We originally thought it wasn't going to do anything, but then all of a sudden it just jumps up and guys look at it. Now it's beautiful. Uh, I planted it a little thicker than I probably should have, but we weren't sure if it was going to make, so I wanted to be sure I could harvest something off of it. Well, today is the day. Today's the 16th of May and it is the first day of our harvest and we're so excited we've already tried a few years previously we showed in a video and it was wonderful the corn tasted fantastic so we let it go to get just a little bit more mature because we didn't quite think it was at the stage that we wanted it at but today is the day so we're going to begin our harvest today You can always tell when they're really ready to pick, they just come off real easy. They break right off and they're nice, beautiful ears. I think the cows is probably gonna love these shucks. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, I just went right here. I picked 20 ears. I went maybe, I don't know, four foot on these rows right here. I got 20 years. So I'm looking at the rest of this field down through here. Yeah, I got a lot of corn to pick. So we're not gonna do, we're not gonna do a whole lot at one time. We're just gonna take it little by little so we don't get overwhelmed with it. And our sugar and our corn doesn't start turning to starches. And plus, I'm going to take a lot of this up and feed it to the cows because I think the cows will enjoy it. Oh, that would work out for me. Boy, hey. You want me to pet you is all it is. You just want me to run up here and rub you. That's all it is. You just want to be rubbed. Bunch of big old babies. I got a bucket behind you I gotta get. Hey Miss Minnie. Hey Minnie. Alright guys, there's a couple of different ways we do corn here. One does hers different than I do mine. I don't know if there's really a right way. I just grab mine in the top and begin to pull back. And it's always got little tiny worms in it like that. If you get your corn early enough, throw them in a bucket separate. Because that goes to the chickens, the shucks, and the silks. That all goes to the cows. We try to utilize everything here on the farm. Then we'll get most of the silks off out here. They make a brush for this. We Wanda does it a little bit later. We're just trying to get it done. And then I usually will just take our knife here. And I can see where the worms has been right there. And I'll just cut that off right quick. And then I've got a pretty clean ear. A little bit of brushing left to do. And that's it. Look at that. Peaches and cream. All right. I take and I just feel to where it feels firm and I cut. And that way I cut the worm and everything. I'm down to a nice ear. I feel right here where it feels firm. And I cut. And the center parts go to and the worms come out that way. I don't have to worry about it. And pretty here, just 
I just take most of these off that we can get off here and I'll take it in and finish it. That way we don't have all these silks, all the shucks in the house. Our feed, cow feed, chicken feed, all at the same time. Peaches and cream. Come on. This right here is what happens with worms. Sometimes they hatch out and they crawl way down in the stalk down here and they eat way down in here. Well, now, Miss Wanda, she gets a little frustrated sometimes because I told her, I said, look, see him sitting there trying to eat? I'm like, just take the worm out. When you blanch it, it's all going to come out anyway. And she says, I, I don't want no corn dookie in my corn. Worm, worm dookie. Corn dookie. You don't want no corn dookie in your Because uh, Danny said it was just corn. I told her, I says, it's just corn when the worm gets through. See, when I take this worm out, it's still just corn. And when you blanch it, it's all going to come out anyway. But I don't want the corn dookie. She don't want no corn dookie. So, uh, well, throw it in the wrong bucket. She don't want no corn dookie in her stuff. So, you know what we do? We have to fix it. We got to fix it. Ms. Wanda won't have it no other way. We're going to get rid of that. And to me, it seems like I'm just wasting some corn here, but... But I don't want corn dookie. Got to cut it all out, guys. Don't that look better? There we go. Now, if he did this and I wasn't in the house and I didn't know it, it'd be different. But I know it. Now, there we go. So the corn dookie's gone. Corn dookie's gone now. Okay, here we have another one. Look at that. And see all the junk around it? Look at around it there. That's just corn. That's just digested corn is all that is. But I don't want no corn dookie in my corn. Well, according to according to the UN and the New World Order, this is healthy food. Only the worm and the dookie. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They're saying this. They'd throw the corn out. They would throw the corn away and eat the worm because <laughs> they're raising worms and stuff. Now insects claiming they're higher in protein. This worm dookie is supposed to be some good stuff. You feed it to the chickens. I'm just sorry. We ain't eating no worm, Dookie, then. Nope. Okay. Chicken's getting this stuff. Look at the worms. My chicken's having fun. What I usually do, I have this little brush here, and I turn the water on about like that, and run this brush over it. Now, that takes out most of the silks. Now, you can use the silks for making jelly. You can use it for making tea. Right now, we're feeding them to the cows because I don't have time. I've got cucumbers, squash, green beans, potatoes, all that's got to be done right now. So, this corn, I have to prioritize. But, that's the way I clean it. And this little brush, I don't know, it probably came from a dollar store. Or it may have came from somewhere. But, it's not a hard brush. You don't want an extremely hard brush but you don't want an extremely soft brush either it's kind of a medium brush and this is what happens when something doesn't pollinate now Danny and I had um, worms get into the end and we had to pick them off about a week and a half ago and when we did it messed up the silks and when the silks are messed up this is what happens we had a few of these that the worms had eaten the silks off the ends and they did not pollinate because your silks are what pollinates the kernels. And this is what I, uh, we picked this one to show you. This one is not ready. Let me show you the difference so you can see. This one hasn't gotten ready yet. It's not going to be as uh, good to eat. You're hardly going to get anything off of it. This one is ready. Now, we haven't picked any that is over ready. When these kernels start dippling in, Danny said this, that's when it's over ready. We didn't pick any like that. Ours are just now getting to the ready stage. So this is not ready. You don't want to pick it at this stage. You want to wait till it looks like this. And guys, the worm dookie. 
that Danny says is only corn. This is what I do. I scrub it really well like that and I get all the corn dookie from the worms out of there because we're not having corn dookie in our corn. I'm going to let this sit in water for just a few minutes while I get some boiling water ready and I'm going to show you how we blanch it and then Danny's going to cut this off. Alright so I have my corn washed, I have water boiling. We're going to put the ears in there and you drop them in really easily. And this is what we do to blanch it ahead of time so that once we cut it off and cool it and all, it is ready for the freezer. And I put as many as I can in there. I check it. I can still put more. We're going to leave this for about six minutes. Um, I've got my tongs. I will just make sure it's under the water, that it's boiling. And we'll boil it six minutes, take it out, and put it in ice water. We've got the juicer steamer going full of beautiful blueberries. Look at that. Look at them blueberries. Uh, We're making juice. Danny wants to make syrup. This is fixing to go off. You see my timer? Six minutes. What we're doing, we're going to take these out. And I'm going to turn that off because by the time I get them all out, I'm going to leave the water going. And look at the color. It turns it a beautiful color when you do this. That's part of it. That's what you're wanting to do is you're seal in the flavors. Yeah, you're setting the color. Yes. Plus it makes it more creamy when you take it off. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Look at that corn. Okay. I can't get too close to the camera or it'll actually fog it up. Yeah. <laughs> but peaches and cream. Ah. Uh. So it's beautiful. almost there and what we do when we get this last one is I start with the next ones and the corn dookie is off of that so we don't have to worry about it my corn we should be able to do what we've got today Three times. We hadn't counted. I don't know. We're probably around 60. We're, we're around. I don't even know how many ears. We'll count them. And this goes in right here. I have ice water. What I'm going to do is just dump it so I don't have to handle it. And then we just cool them off. Once it's cooled, we'll go put them in a dish pan. Let me mention something about corn. There's one that may not have mentioned it here yet. When you're doing sweet corn, do not use aluminum. No. Only use plastic, stainless steel, or enamel cookware to do corn in. Do not use aluminum because it will give it a metallic taste and it will be kind of a kind of a bad taste in your corn. And once you shuck the corn, you don't want to wait hours after you pick corn. We picked this corn probably an hour and a half ago. And we've already got it to this stage. If you longer you let it set, the sugars in it will turn to starch and your sweet corn will not be sweet. It'll be starchy tasting. If you've got to wait, put it in the fridge. And the, the one step that most people miss and it makes their corn sour is they do not cool it off. Right. You've got to cool this corn off. Either blanch it this way and cool it off. Or if you cook it, cool it off totally you've got to cool it. freezing. Because what happens is you stack it in the freezer, it's still warm and it will sour. All right, Wanda and I are big on stainless steel products, mainly because they last a lifetime. Now, they used to make these out of wood, and there's nothing wrong with the old wooden ones, but the stainless ones now are easy to clean. Now, this one has a shelf on it here that you can take off right there. The cream style corn, it has a cutter blade right here that's really sharp. Then it has these little ears sticking up right here that's like points sticking up. They stick up about a quarter inch high. 
and then it has a scraper right here. Now this is what we use to do our cream style corn with. You just take a corn cob and you just push it down and see how it cuts it off. I do it a couple of times, roll it a little bit. And be careful. Be careful because it will, it'll get you just as well as it will the corn. Actually there's an art to this. There is an art to it. Many people get fingers and fingernails and everything in this. Yep. I'm surprised they ain't outlawed it today, but I mean, it is still what it is. You can still get these. There's what you got. Just the corn cob that's left over. It's good for the animals after that point. Then you kind of knock it off, and this is what you end up with. Nice cream style corn. You want to keep it spread out because it's still just a touch warm and you do not want to put it in the freezer, freezer until it is completely warm. Now this is one way of doing completely it. Completely cool. I'm sorry, completely cool. This is one way of doing it. Another old fashioned way of doing it is you can take your corn, I like to stand mine up on the end, and you can start down here and you can take your knife and you can just cut the, the tops off of them. You just go down through here. But you're making more of a whole kernel. This is a little bit more of a whole kernel than what you get. Now, you, it's still going to be cream style. It depends on how close to the ends of the kernels you cut it. Now, I'm just nipping the ends of it out here. I'm not cutting it down right against the stop. If you like whole kernel, you can take it like this and you can go all the way down to the cob there, like that, and you see the cob in it. But then the, this is where a lot of the old people would do it. They would come back and scrape the juice. Scrape the juice off of it. They'd clip just the tips off of it, and then they'd come back and scrape it. And technically, Either way. you end up with the same exact thing. We are on the last one. We got four minutes to go here. Back when I was a kid, we would pull several hundred ears of corn, close to a thousand at a time. We would have three or four families together, my aunts and uncles and cousins, and somebody would be sitting out shucking. Then you would have somebody silking and cleaning. Then you would have somebody in the house doing the boiling here and making it over to the cooling off stage here. And then we would have the elderly ladies sitting around cutting off corn. I don't have any elderly ladies. I got Danny. <laughs> and then they would cool it off, make sure it was boxed. Somebody would be boxing and spreading it out. And guys, that's how my family used to do it. our sweet corn. I've got butter from uh, May of 18. So this butter is two years old. This is some of my canned butter. I've got it hot in my skillet. We've got a cup of corn here. We're just going to dish it out right quick. That's fresh. It's fresh. Danny just got to cutting this. We're going to Push it around the skillet. I've got it on high right now, but we'll be turning it down in a minute. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and guys, that's it. That's butter, salt, and pepper. Corn. It's all you need. And this is my iron skillet. Um, it's always better cooked in cast iron. Oh yeah, always. And this is just kind of a, a pan fried corn, I guess if you wanted to say. You get your iron from it, the taste, everything, because this is fresh. Now, if you were taking it out of the freezer, 
What I would do would be um, thawing it out before putting it in here and do the same thing. If you've canned it, now we have, I have not canned corn in 15, 20 years. I did not like, like the taste of canned corn. So I have done it and I don't like whole kernel. I like this, um, the way Danny cut it with the cutter. Now I will eat the whole kernel corn, but it's to me, I was raised on this. And it's on high, we're just gonna kinda keep it from, you don't want it to stick, I'll turn it down as soon as it gets uh, pan. The skillet has to get good and hot. And you can take sweet corn and dry it, right? Mm -hmm. And make flour, cornmeal, or grits. Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility. If your corn goes too far, your sweet corn, and it starts drying, you can use it for seed, but you can also make it into flour, grits, or cornmeal. Do the same thing with popcorn. Popcorn too, yeah. That's something we haven't planted. <gasps> no, we haven't planted popcorn. I want popcorn. We're planting popcorn. We're going to plant some popcorn. Okay, guys, you hear it. First here at Deep South Homestead. We're planting popcorn. I There's one that wants popcorn. Yes, we eat popcorn quite often. It's one of our best snacks. We grew some last year, but we didn't realize that a possum got into it one night and cleaned the whole patch up one night. Before we got, just before we harvested it. Right before we harvested it. So Needless to say, we won't be it. worried with him anymore. No. And this takes no time to cook. About right. It. You might want to start killing that skillet down, I was noticing. Yeah. Because an iron skillet, once it gets hot, it holds its heat. And on a flat top surface, it doesn't cool off. No. So you can turn it down, I think it's on a simmer and just stir it, I would say about, what, five minutes? And then just let it sit? Yeah, just let it sit. I just wanna make sure that it's getting hot all the way through. You're and not I, trying to brown it. No, unless you want it brown, I guess you could. But I'm not trying to brown it. I'm just trying to cook it through and through in the butter. And it looks Let's get a awesome. good look at that right up close. It actually smells Ooh, really good. Look at that. Smells Man. really good too. And y'all, while we're doing this, the blueberries in the we steamer. Got, we've got blueberries in the steamer. We're going to be using the juice to make syrup. And I have juice here. Here's the juice. Look at this juice coming out of it. Ooh. And there's more in the steamer. I just had. Yeah, got out we've yet. got gallons and gallons and gallons of blueberries to pick. So. And while we're at it, show them you've got a. Has me a sweet potato dessert in here. And y'all, I use my new Ninja. I'm in love. I she had loves ninja her before, Ninja. But hey, I made his pecan cookies. Took just a second. A few seconds to do it. In the the sweet potato. Oh my goodness. It did, I dumped everything in there, blended it up. It was awesome. I'm hooked. I like the Ninja. All right, you see what I'm doing? We'll probably let it go a minute or two longer. Flip that off. You can put a, a lid over the top. Take it off the burner because you don't want it to burn. Yes, take it off of that hot burner and slide over onto a section of the stove. Because I've not, not used this. And I will take it and move it over here, put a glass lid that I have that fits. And it'll sit there and steam in this iron skillet. You can actually cook in an iron skillet without fire once you get the yeah. skillet hot. Now, if this had been a gas oven, you wouldn't have to move it because you could just turn it off. Or yeah. if you had an electric stove oven that's set up on top of eyes, you wouldn't have to do yeah, it. Yeah, the eyes cool off. But the flat top does not cool off. No. I've learned. I did not like the flat top at first. I still don't really like it, but... You have to learn how to work with it. Okay, so. Hang on here. I hear it crunching, still raw. Well, that's your whole kernels. Yeah. It ain't quite there, but it's getting there. But once you put the lid on it, let it steam, it'll be there. Oh, yeah. So, guys. Pan fried. Let's take. We don't want to lose a bite. Work too hard for this. Guys. This has been six minutes. We have not cut this. Six minutes. 
Now we're gonna slide it back onto another part of the stove. That's okay. it. We're gonna just let it set for a few minutes and it's done. All right, guys, we're in the kitchen, ready to bag up our corn, our sweet corn. Now, back a couple of months ago when you couldn't find a whole lot and couldn't get stuff, I ordered a whole bunch of these bags from online. Um, they're slider easy bags, they call chill out. Uh, I'm not sure the name of the company, Jet maybe, or Wink By, it's got a lot of different names on the back, but these were awesome. I got a whole bunch of them for a fraction of the price of what I was paying for something else. And they work really well. Now, first off, I write on them. I put sweet corn. And I didn't put peaches and cream because that's the only kind we grew this time. And Danny and I will know that it's sweet corn as long as I put sweet corn in the date. Now, I put two cups in here and I mashed it flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cookie sheet, I'm going to lay these on a cookie sheet, take them out to my freezer, and let them freeze flat. I do not pile one, two, three on top of the other one. I lay them flat till they freeze. This thin, they will freeze fast. Now if you have a bigger family, you have to do something different. But it's just Danny and I. Two cups is way, that's enough corn for us. And so, Ziploc bags, mash them out flat freeze them flat and they will stack one on top of the other really well and take up very little room in your freezer. Now you see I had a bowl full of corn. I think we counted, uh, it was about 50 ears that were reasonable. They were pretty full, full filled out. Now, one thing um, we noticed that some of them weren't quite, about 10 of them weren't quite as full as we wanted them. So we're leaving them a couple more days. Um, probably the first of the week. We will check it again, probably three quarters of it will be full. We'll take those and leave the others. And so this will be, you know, about a three to four day process to finish the field. But I'll let you know in a minute how many bags I have. And I always write on them before I put anything in it because if you wait till you get it wet, it doesn't work. And I put two really good helpings. In there. So that is two good cups. Mash the air out because you don't want any air in it. And then mash the corn out. And then I'm putting them on my tray here. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of space at the top and not mash it all the way to the top so that I have a little bit left there. And I can put four on this tray to cool. I have seven bags with two cups in each bag in the freezer off of approximately 50 ears of corn. I think that's pretty good for us.